Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos. And today we're gonna to be doing a storyboard tumbler or glitter flow tumbler type thing. But I know these are kind of intimidating, but I know you guys got this. As always, I'll make sure to put everything that I use today into the description box below so that way you guys can purchase those items if you would like to. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. So the first thing we're going to do is go over a storyboard tumbler. I purchased mine through the seamlessdepotcompany.com. That's that's where I get most of my, my tumblers. <laughs> but it comes in this double packaging, which is nice if you plan on shipping them out to customers or shipping them off to family and friends. It has a push top sli slider type lid. So I'm just going to pop that off and show you guys. And then it's going to come apart. So you're going to unscrew the bottom and then the, the middle center acrylic piece pops right off of the main stainless steel base there. And th these are your parts to your storyboard tumbler and that's what we're going to be building off of today. Now those three pieces of paper that were in the center, I, I believe they're for like if you want to glue pictures to it or have your kids draw pictures and you can stick it back in there and have your, your tumbler like that. You can do it that way, but of course we're not doing it that way today. So just stick those papers off to the side and we're going to get this tumbler prepped. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off the bottom and then I'm going to take off that acrylic sleeve that goes over the center there. And I'm actually going to stick that acrylic sleeve right back into its box. I'm just going to go ahead and put it right back in, into its wrapping just so that way, you know, little fingerprints don't get put on it or dust or anything like that just to kind of protect it. So just stick that off to the side and I just go ahead and stick the bottom in there as well because we don't need that right now either. And now we're going to move on to starting on the center base. Now, I am going to be doing a peekaboo with this, as you guys seen at the beginning, but if you wanted to keep this just stainless on the outside, you don't have to do what I'm going to be doing at the very end. So either way, you still want to tape off the top portion here because I didn't want it to be the color of my insides. So I went ahead and taped that off. And I'm also going to tape off the threads around the bottom, which is very important because you don't want anything getting into your threads. You don't want any paint, glitter, anything like that. So go ahead and tape that up. And I forgot to show it, but I did sand it down and then I took it outside and I, <laughs> I spray painted it this coral color after that's all nice and dry. Then we're ready to go ahead and start applying our glitter to our base. Essentially, we're doing this up just like you would a tumbler. So, so easy so far, right? I, I know you guys got this. All right, so I'm going to be using my amazing sealer for this. You can use Mod Podge if you would like. And the glitters I'm going to be using today is Peachy Punch and Pina Colada. I just kind of wanted like a two-tone color to it. So I'm doing a little bit of chunky at the top and the bottom, and then I'm filling it in with my fine glitters from there. Okay, now this is really important. You don't want to get too much stuff up under that rim. I'm going right up. If you see my brush, it's going just right up against that rim. I don't really want it going too much further down in there, just so that way I know that my acrylic sleeve is going to have enough space to kind of attach to underneath there once we're all done epoxying and everything. And I also just painted right along, right where that curve at the bottom meets the bottom, right at the curve there. I just went a little bit over on that as well because I am going to put just a tad more epoxy up over the bottom just so that way I know everything's going to be nice and sealed once, once we go to start epoxying and everything. So like I said earlier, I'm just going to put my chunkies on the top and the bottom, just kind of making, what is this, like a burst type thing. That, that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Pretty simple. But pretty much wherever your imagination can take you when you come to making these, let it take you there. I've seen some pretty amazing tumblers out there, the storyboard tumblers. You know, it, it's it's just mind blowing the things that you can do with this once you get comfortable with making them. All right, so now that my chunky glitter is applied, I'm just gonna come through and apply my fine glitter. Do the same thing, just kind of fill in a little bit here and there around my my chunky uh, glitters and and making sure that it's all nice and filled in. And I'm going to stick that off to the side and let it dry before I start applying my epoxy. Now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape and I'm going to go ahead and take my chip brush and I'm just going to sweep away any extra glitters that are on this tumbler. It's going to make it a lot easier, of course, when you go to do your epoxy. And I'm also making sure that I get up under that rim as well with my chip brush, just removing any little particles from under there because you don't want any little particles under there or around the threads on the bottom. So that's all I'm going to do here. And then we're going to start applying the epoxy. 
So I have 20 mLs of my epoxy mixed up here, and I'm going to use all 20 mLs to get my first coat going here. And I want to show you guys, so this is, you just want to be careful up around the rim. I'm just going to lightly go over the bottom, but I'm taking my hand just like I did with my glue, and I'm just going to lightly rub across the bottom as well. You don't want any buildup of epoxy or anything like that. It's going to make it a lot easier once we go to put that acrylic sleeve on, because if there's any big goops of epoxy in there you're gonna have to come through and cut it out and all that so you want a nice smooth transition for that acrylic sleeve to slip down into so make sure you guys are doing a nice smooth application of your epoxy and just like with a regular tumbler after i'm done applying my epoxy i'm going to place it onto my turner i'm going to go ahead and hit it up really good with my my torch to pop any of those micro bubbles i'm going to let that cure and i'll be ready to move on to the next step now that it's all nice and cured, I'm gonna come through and I give it a really good sanding. What do I have here? I think it's just a 180 grit block that I have there. I just wanna sand it down really good because there was some, a little bit of lumps and bumps in there because we used our glue rather than epoxy method. But you guys could do it either way, you know, any way you'd like, epoxy method, Mod Podge, whatever you wanna do. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and sand that. I'm gonna apply another 10 mLs of epoxy in the same exact fashion as I did the first time. I'm gonna place that onto my turner, let that cure, and they'll be ready to move on to that next step. All right, now the fun begins. We're gonna start piecing our storyboard tumbler together. So the silicone I'm using is just this DAP Ultra Clear, but you guys, I, I've seen a lot of people use the GE stuff. I've seen people use aquarium silicone. I've seen people use epoxy to glue the, the sleeve onto the base. However you guys feel comfortable, but that's what I'm using today to do mine. But I will make sure to put all the other different variations down in the description box for you guys as well. So the main purpose of this is you want to make sure that you get that silicone up inside right in between where that sleeve comes down and connects to your base. And I like to just kind of see how the sleeve connects before I start doing it, just so I know what I'm doing once I go to apply the sleeve. So that's why you'll see me pop it on and off there a couple times before I apply my silicone. I'm holding it up to the camera so you guys can see, but it's much easier if you just lay it flat on the table. <laughs> and you're just gonna run a bead of that silicone right in between where that lip is there. So right along that seam line where that sleeve connects down into, you just wanna place a line of your silicone all the way around. Now, once I have my silicone applied, I'm just gonna take a silicone tool or you could use a popsicle stick. You just want something to be able to shove down in there and kind of make sure that it gets further down in there rather than just right on top. So again, I'm holding it up to the camera so you guys can see, but it's easier just holding it against the table and then just kind of pressing it down in between there, making sure it's all nice and filled in. And to really make sure that it's gonna have a very good seal, I'm gonna actually put a, a line of silicone around the top of my acrylic sleeve as well, just to really make sure there's no little air bubbles that I might've missed when I put the silicone in between the rim there. Now this next part could be pretty messy. So you just wanna be very careful when you take that sleeve and slide it over your base. You wanna make sure that your silicone doesn't touch the side of your tumbler. Slide it all the way down until it connects down into the lip at the top there. You're gonna make sure that it's pressed in really good. It makes kind of a click noise whenever it pops in and you're gonna see all that extra silicone pop out, but that's okay. We're gonna come through and swipe all that away. Now to make sure that it keeps that nice tight seal that I want, I'm gonna go ahead and put the bottom cap back onto it, just screw it down nice and tight, and then I'm gonna come through and swipe away any of this extra silicone right off the side. Now, because I already know that I'm doing a peekaboo, the extra silicone doesn't really bother me too much, but if you don't wanna do the peekaboo and you just wanna leave it plain like it, like it is after it's all said and done, you wanna make sure that you come through and kinda of clean that up a little bit better because you don't wanna see all that extra silicone at the, at the top and the bottom once we're done. Now, something I wanna to talk to you guys about is I do come back through and take the bottom cap off probably about eight hours after that silicone has been on there just so that way it has air to make sure it completely dries and then I let it sit overnight after that. So this is pretty much, you, you really have to make sure the silicone is nice and dry. And then I just put the cap back on just to verify everything's still good. And then I'm gonna do my water test just to make sure that my seal is okay. But the but the purpose of me uh, taking the cap off and letting it continue to cure is because if you don't do that, air can't get to it and it won't cure properly or the silicone won't cure properly. So that's all you want to do. And if you want to let it sit for a couple days just to make sure that silicone is nice and cured, please do that as well. You just really want to make sure that silicone is going to 
dry up and stay in place for you. All right, so my seal is good. There was no water leakage and now we're ready to start filling it up. So for my liquid here, I have, it's, it's just a 50-50 mix of distilled water and uh, glycerin. That, that's pretty much all you want to do. So I have about a cup of room temperature distilled water, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add another cup of my glycerin, and I'm going to stir that around really well, and it's going to look foggy at first, and then it's going to, see, magic, just magic. And that's going to give you a really nice kind of medium flow to your tumbler. Now, I did not need to mix up this much. This is more than enough to do what I need to do. So you guys could actually get uh, yourself some storage bottles and store the rest of it for another project on another day. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting my glitters in. This is called Tropical Vibes. It's like a bunch of shapes of palm trees, flamingos, pineapples, you know, <laughs> putting shapes. I, I did about two capfuls. I probably could have did about three. I, that's how I do most of my measuring is with my caps. I'm, I'm just saying. So I'm actually going to put a little bit of liquid in just to kind of help it out a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but then once you start going, I have to use my spoon. I have a spoon there off to the side that I was using to stir. And you just need something to kind of help these shapes stand up straight to get down into the side once you start going. But I find that uh, more metallic or shapes and stuff really do very well when it comes to doing these. Um, I find that anything, any fine glitters tend to get clumpy. So that's just me. I don't know. You know, if you guys know, let, let everybody know down in the comments what, what you guys like to do whenever you do your glitter flows. But all I know for sure is if you just add fine glitter to it, it's going to get clumpy. So I... <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so now it's just the process of getting these uh, shapes down into the sides there, standing up nice and straight, kind of getting them stirred around. And then I'm going to add a little bit of, um, what is this, Lucky Stars, just a little bit of extra. It's a chunky. Now this does have some fines in it, but that's okay. It's not too much fines where it gets too clumpy in there, you know, so just two capfuls of that. And then just continuing to fill in my liquid a little bit as I go, just kind of help out with those air bubbles. And then after I'm done adding the glitters I'd like to add in, I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this up. I'm just going to fill that um, liquid up until it gets around to the bottom there. And then I'm actually going to come through and put the bottom on and I'm going to swish it. I'm sorry, this is what I do. It just really helps out with the air bubbles, I'm just saying. So I'm going to swish it around, kind of tap it down. I'm going to wash that lid off before we finish sealing it up anyways. So, And just make sure that all those glitters are nice and filled in with their liquid and it really helps out like I said with the air bubbles rising to the top as well and I'm just going to continue to bring that liquid up to around the hip there see how it is and then I just let that sit overnight just kind of let it air off and make sure that any of those little bubbles are completely out of there before we seal it up so that way you don't have big bubbles all over the place. All right, it's the next day. Now we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up our threads there. I just take some rubbing alcohol. I come through and I make, because I shook it around, you know, <laughs> I'm going to clean off the threads and I'm just going to push that glitter back away, making sure that my silicone is going to be able to sit properly on the bottom base. So see how it looks right there. That's, that's pretty much how you want yours to look. You want to clean it up as best as that you can. I even come through and I clean up the, the acrylic sleeve too so that way I know that my silicone is going to be able to stick to it and as you see there my lid is nice and washed and ready to go as well. Now I didn't want to go too fast on this I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing even though my hand's in the way <laughs> but right around uh the rim there I not the rim but right around the base of the bottom of the the inside of the tumbler there I'm going to do two lines of my silicone so after I move my hands out of the way you'll kind of see you see the silicone right there in the center I don't want it near my threads okay but what I'm going to do is this is going to create a barrier because after the silicone is dry we're going to come through and fill it with epoxy to really make sure that everything's going to stay nice and sealed in and you know, last as long as possible for us. You can use your finger, but I'm just using my little silicone tool. That's why I put my glove on in case I wanted to use my finger. And I'm just very gently taking that silicone and pressing it up against the acrylic sleeve on the other side. Now the silicone will kind of drip down just a little bit into the liquid. Not too bad though. It's it wasn't. It's not really that bad. I I've done these multiple times and I haven't really had an issue with it like dripping down the side or anything. So, but you're just creating a barrier for that liquid to stay inside 
like I said. So you're just put, taking that acrylic, pushing it up against the uh, acrylic sleeve there, and I'm going to do one more thread of that silicone right around it just to really make sure. I'd rather be safe than sorry, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do another stripe of that silicone and do the same thing, just making sure that it's nice and pressed up against our silicone sleeve. And just like I did with the rim, I'm gonna leave the cap off of this. I'm gonna set it off to the side, leave the cap off of it, and let that dry for three days. That's what I do, three days, just to really make sure, because we did a very thick coating of that silicone, and I just wanna make sure, again, that it's gonna last for a long time to come. So this one right here, I accidentally forgot to record my other one, but it's the same exact concept, it's the same exact thing. This is how I do all of them. Now I'm taking my epoxy. I have about 20 mLs of my epoxy, and I'm just smearing that into the inside of the cap at the top. And I'm also doing it a little bit up and around the rim as well, just to make sure that it's gonna have a nice seal to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up about halfway up my threads. You don't wanna do fully to the top because it runs the chance of once you screw your cap down, it could squish up over the top, and we don't want that, so. I did about halfway up my threads just to make sure that once I screw my cap on, it's going to have very good sealage <laughs> once it's all cured. So I'm going to go ahead and press my cap on, make sure that it's as tight as possible. You don't want to crank it down too hard. You might crack your acrylic and we don't want that. So crank it down as hard as, you know, as much as you can until there's just slight resistance. And then you're going to set that off to the side and let that cure all the way before you start flipping it around and taking a look at it. All right, so here is my tumbler, nice and cured, and you could honestly keep it just like this. I'm trying to show you guys that's the silicone around the bottom. That's why I like using the extra clear because, you, you know, you, you can't really see it too much. But this is what the glitter flow looks like. This is how it looks. You could keep it just like this. It'll be perfectly fine, but we're going to go ahead and add a peekaboo to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 180 sandy block there, and I'm just going to give... A very light sanding to the acrylic just to ha give it a little bit of grip so that way once we go to do everything it, it grips down to our acrylic and then I'm going to set that off to the side I'm going to quickly go over the decals I'll be using so the decal that I use I got right off of Creative Fabrica and it comes just like this it comes with the green leaf it comes with the outline there and you just want to set your sizing to what you would like and you want to make sure that you set it to cut so that way basic cut so that way you know, it doesn't print it out or anything. So we're gonna set that uh, to basic cut and then we're just gonna size it to what we want. One of them I did about three and a half inches in height and the other one I left about four inches in height. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up four a piece of each of these. And the leaf that I'm gonna be using for the peekaboo, you just wanna use a semi-permanent vinyl to whenever you go to cut that. And the outline, I'm actually using a very pretty pink oval that I got from Courtney's Customs. And again, I'll make sure to put that stuff into the description box below for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut and ready to go. So I actually used uh, mainly the bigger leaves and I just pull it right up like this. It's very simple. It's a, it's a really easy decal to use. So <laughs> I just went ahead and pulled it up like that. It makes it a little bit easier. But I, went, I used more of the bigger leaves and just kind of staggered those around. And then I only used about two of the smaller ones. So, you know, and but again, this is a 30 ounce. So it really depends on how big your tumbler is. Now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to spray paint my base uh, Seaside Blue by Rust-Oleum. I thought about doing a purple and then I decided to stick with blue because I really like how it kind of reminds me of like a tropical theme. So again, wherever your imagination takes you, you know, or you can use your acrylic paints, however you guys want to do it because we're going to be glittering over anyways, or you could leave it uh, painted just like that. But as you see, I did not remove my decals yet and I wanted to, I don't, and I'm going to sprinkle so I put my glue on, I'm gonna sprinkle my agenda over this, and then I'm gonna start peeling back my decals. Now I could see my decals, but if you know you're gonna have an issue with being able to see your decals after you uh, glue it and glitter it, <laughs> go ahead and put dabs of hot glue on your decals so that way you can find your decals because it can get a little bit hard if, if your eyes aren't very good. So put little dabs of hot glue on your decals before you uh, glue it and glitter it so that way you can see it. But I'm just peeling that up right away. I didn't let my glue dry just so that way my decals didn't get stuck down to my tumbler. <laughs> 
All right, after that glue is nice and dry, we're gonna come through with that chip brush and sweep away any extra glitter. Just sweep it really good. I just take that brush and really get in there and do that just to make sure that nothing's gonna shift around on me. Then after I'm done doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and I put 30 mLs of epoxy over top of this just so that way I know I have a nice smooth surface to be able to apply my opal vinyls over top of my leaves. I'm gonna let that cure up really good and we'll be ready to finish this guy up. All right, it's nice and cured. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down really good. I'm gonna sand my rim. I'm gonna sand the base just to really make sure everything is nice and smooth, making sure that my rim is nice and, and smooth and all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna give that a sanding, wipe it down really good and start applying my last decals. So these little decals are pretty easy to line up. I just started at the bottom of my leaf there. I lined up the stem and then I lined up kind of the bottom of the leaf and it pretty much went on flawlessly after that, you know, as flawless as it can get, you know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna do that all the way around my tumbler, putting these outlines on all of my leaves here. And then it'll be time to add its last two finishing coats of epoxy and he is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.